The late Archbishop and Primate of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, Joseph Abiodun Adetiloye, was born into a humble polygamous home on Christmas Day, 25th December 1929, in the small town of Uduawa, Ekiti State, Nigeria. The young Abiodun's early childhood was indeed lived in considerable hardship, having lost his father, Adeti, when he was only three years old. As a child born into a devout Christian family, Abiodun began his elementary education at the Christ Church School in Jeroekiti in 1937. And just like many other pupils in his time, Abiodun had to cover the distance between Uduawa and Ijeru by foot. The young Abiodun was not only a serious pupil, he was so brilliant that he gained double promotions in his examinations. Besides his academic brilliance, Abiodun Adetiloye was also a very neat young boy. Yet, he was a pupil who had only one set of school uniform. The late Archbishop Abiodun Adetiloye began to show traits of a priest early in life. Accounts have it that he was fondly referred to as Alpha Brahimo by many people in Nudowa even before he saw the four walls of any theological school. In 1944, Abiodun Adetiloye passed with distinction his first school living certificate examination. For the young boy, the choice to become an Anglican priest was made at a very young age. On completion of his primary and secondary education, and after a teaching stint in Nigeria, he headed for the Anglican Training College, otherwise known as Melville Hall in Kudeti, Ibadan, in 1949, for his first priestly training. At the seminary in Ibadan, he was an intellectual delight, a moral example, and a spiritual model. He was further educated in England at King's College, London, and Wycliffe Hall, Oxford. He was ordained as a deacon in 1953 at the Cathedral Church of Lagos by the first Archbishop of West Africa, Leslie Vinen. He was later posted to St. Peter's Church at Ke Abeokuta as a curate in 1954. Later served as a chaplain to Archbishop Vinen and afterwards to Archbishop Adelakun Howells. And it was indeed his closeness to Bishop Howells that enabled him to go to Wycliffe Hall in Oxford, England, sponsored by the Diocese of Lagos. While in England, he was involved in some parish ministries. When he returned to Nigeria in 1962, the Reverend Adetiloye taught at the Emmanuel College of Theology, Ibadan, and became the vice principal of the school in 1963. In August 1966, he became vicar and provost of the Cathedral Church of St. James in Ibadan. And four years later, that was August 1970, he was elected and nominated Bishop of the Diocese of Ekiti. And so, the man who came as an ordinary priest to the Cathedral of St. James in Ibadan was consecrated as the Bishop of the then Young Ekiti Diocese. For a new diocese that was just founded, the task of laying a solid foundation for the Diocese of Ekiti was always going to be a huge one for the young Bishop Adetiloye. And this challenge he knew and tackled headlong. Bishop Adetiloye quickly set about his mission. The Diocese invested in all areas of life which included evangelism, education, health facilities, social welfare and even stock exchange. The Bishop of the Diocese of Lagos West, Anglican Communion, Dr. Peter Awelewa Adebeye, shares his fond memories 
of the revolution which took place at the Diocese of Fekiti during the 15-year tenure of late Bishop Adetiloe. His contribution to the Church of Nigeria cannot be brought together easily because his attitude, his way of life, his contribution was so immense. Starting from what we have, we call today, every bishop now has what we call assistant to the bishop. Administrative assistant to the bishop. He started it in this country. About what we call the pastoral system, whereby abolishing these church councils and all the rest, bringing the resources of the diocese into one pause so that we can develop. It was the one who introduced it and the whole country is doing it now. Again, about secret society. In this adequity, when I was in chaplain, one of the greatest members of our of our church there died. And he was being brought from adequity. And myself and he we stood or he had me to stay on the road. And when the man was being brought from the from the from the hospital, he directed the cop to the cathedral. He did not allow the cop to go to our, to, to his house. And you see the the, the, the secret society members, they already rushed to manage church cathedral. And they were, one of them was abusing my, my bishop, I didn't know yet. Say, you, you did this, and Papa put his pocket into his hand, he, he put his hand into his pocket. I said, you put your hand into the pocket, you this uh, bishop, bring your, your, hand, bring your hand out and shake me. And the man, and bishop, I didn't know, brought his hand out and shook him, shook him like this. And the man was saying, you, you do want to break my hand? And I didn't know, says, yes, the European says, shake hand, I shook your hand. That evening before we got to Doha, the man now went to Papa's mama and said, Papa will not live more than two, seven days. And Papa was, mama was afraid. Papa said, do, I was afraid too. Papa said, don't mind him. Too. But the man himself died before the seventh day. In this equity, I, I, I don't want to name the name. The man himself died the seventh day. And so the following Sunday now, Papa now went to the cathedral. And we marched out of it, of of of, the, of, of Arugia. and that was the end of Oburi fraternity in Nikiti. Mm. And every Oburi houses in Nikiti were destroyed, and everything. Everybody now became af we were no longer afraid of Oburi. And they took him to court. The leader, yeah, in Arugia, yeah, and the deputy leader, whatever, took him to, to court. And the case the case was going on, but incidentally, one of them became blind. One, one, one of them who uh, became uh, paralyzed. And that was the end of the whole thing. And that thing now was now embedded into the constitution of the Church of Nigeria. Mm. So that if you are a member of the Anglican Church, you will now swear an oath that you do not belong to any secret society. If you belong to one, you say you want to renounce. It is there today in our constitution. It was the constitution of the Church. By the time the Right Reverend Abiodun Adetiloye was leaving the Diocese of Ikiti in 1985, the number of archdeaconries in the Diocese had increased to 18 from the mere five he inherited when he took over. The total number of clergymen in the Diocese had also increased to 137 from 18 in the same period. In 1985, the Right Reverend Abiodun Adetiloe was translated to the Diocese of Lagos. And on the 26th December 1986, just a day after his 57th birthday, he was enthroned as the second primate of the Church of Nigeria. His contributions to the growth of the Church of Nigeria are legendary. It is on the strength of those laudable achievements that the late primate has been variously described as a beacon of hope for Nigeria, a master of God's word, an evangelist simplicity, apostle of evangelism, and a silent reformer. We talk about Baba's uh, zeal on evangelism because I was with him in 1990, 1st of uh, January when he launched what we call the Decade for Evangelism in Lokoja. He went to Lokoja to launch it because hitherto there had been a, an accord among the church missionaries in the early 1900s, the EQUA, the SIM, and so on, that uh, the 
north was zoned to them, and then the south was zoned to the Anglicans, Methodists, and Presbyterians. So Baba came in 1990 and said, put a cause aside. Evangelism must be full blown. So it was then that he proclaimed the decade for evangelism and uh, uh, inaugurated 10 missionary dioceses in the north. And these were Bauchi, Kumbe, Damatru, Sokoto, Medugure, Dutse, Yola, Mina, and uh, I think Kafancha. Ten of them. Uh, although there were three in the south. Uh, Uyo, Kalaba, and one other one, which I can't remember. Really. So he now got people from Lagos, rich people anyway, to sponsor those missionary dioceses for 33 years. A sponsorship was that they will spend, uh, I think, three million a year uh, to support the staff, the bishop, and so on in those areas. And that was how we were able to penetrate the north. Baba was able to penetrate everywhere in the north, and he went everywhere by road, not flying, by road. And when some people said, ah, Baba, why are you not flying? He said, if I fly, how would the people know me? How will I see them? How will I preach to them? Because evangelism is personal. You must see them and talk to them. That was in Nigeria. And overseas, it formed what we call South, South Encounter, which consists of the poor people in the Southern America and in, the South, in, 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 in Africa and Asia. And they started with a, 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 a conference which they called the, the first encounter of the trumpet. And it became the chairman for many years. Today, this organization is the bedrock of the Christian faith. They are the people, why others are speaking about homosexualism, about lesbianism, this is the people now that is fighting against that, that one in the church, in, in, in the church of hemisphere. Aditi Loi was as humble as he was modest. He lived a life obsessed with selfless service to the common man and those in need. In the period of military oppression and repression in Nigeria, it was in his pastoral quest for a just and democratic Nigeria that Aditi Loye teamed up with other revolutionary actors in the Christian Association of Nigeria can to consistently rattle the military leadership through his subtle and often biting sermonic remonstrations. He also uses influence for the struggle for a truly united equity. Baba was bold, confident, and uh, uh, ready to fight for the truth. And the truth was that the military had become a thorn in the flesh of Nigeria at that time. So Baba was writing personal letters. And you remember at that time, he would publish it. When the head of state then pretended as if he didn't see his letters, Baba would publish and so on. And they began to train him. And when Baba saw that they were training him, you know what he did? He flung open the doors or the gates of the Denai Marina. In the evenings, he, moved. he said, security, leave the place. Open it. Let anyone who wants to come and kill him, come inside. And they could not come because any time they came, they saw angels on guard. And they ran away. So Baba didn't fear to talk, to write. He was, he was misled. He was naked. Really politics. People thought that he belonged to A or he belonged to the politi politics. But what he, he, he wanted was that there must be a unified people in the Kiti. Whatever uh, political party you belong to. And that was what led him to what we call the declaration of Hidu, which we did in the year 1984. Where we say, we made a statement in the Anglican, that was in the Kiti, that whatever happens in the future, we will not kill, we will not mean, will not destroy one another's homes. And because of this, we will spend our time to love one another. And then there was a liberty garden to be established at Idwekiti, which of course did not happen. 
After his retirement, the Most Reverend Dr. Joseph Abiodo Adetiloye went back to his roots to continue his life of communal service. To his people at Oduawa, he freely and willingly gave all he could. He was instrumental to the building of the St. Paul's Millennium Church, a multi-millionaire ultra-modern church complex in the town. He was also hugely supportive in the establishment of the only secondary school in the town. Baba is a philanthropist. He's a religious man. He's a man with vision. And I am very, very elated to have had somebody like that in my community. He did a lot. A lot, indeed. Let's say, the small planet that I'm living, he did it solely, without the assistance of anybody. And our comprehensive high school, he, he built almost three or four quarters there on his personal ground. Then the St. Paul's Millennium uh, Anglican Church, a central of St. Neuio, is the only person that brought that thing to the landlines of Udo Ekiti. And that is a fantastic thing that he has done in the Christendom for the community of Udo Ekiti. He was very helpful uh, publicly uh, to the country, particularly the Yoruba race. Uh, during my time, you know, we had the trouble in the West for some time. And he uh, was very close to me, was advising me on what to do and what not to do. And I took it that of his advice. And during the Civil War II, we were very close. He was advising me from time to time. And his advices were very helpful to me and to the nation. And um, I'm sure those of us who were close to him during the time he was a primate or he was a bishop, uh, we miss him because he was very, very helpful to individuals and to the country. Whatever he said to us to do, well, I cannot say I will do, I will remember him for one or two things. I will remember him for all things that he did for me when I was the governor of the Western region. And um, he was bold, he was honest, he was sincere in whatever he told me. And I took his, his, his advice. And they were very useful. And I will really miss him. Do you know what he did later in Odawa? They, they, they had uh, an outstanding assessment to this diocese of two point three seven million naira. They couldn't find money to pay it. We went to Baba and Bet and Baba released a check of two million naira out of it. He released that I think on the third or fourth of December and died on the fourteenth. Anyone who went to him and said, Baba, eh, I have problem, difficulty with school fees of my children, with well, how much do you need? He will give out. Out of the sustenance money, which uh, does this of Lagos, does this of uh, Lagos West, does this of Lagos Mainland were giving him, and uh, the Babinti Macaulay School was giving him money to, they will come and they will, Baba will just be giving out that money. If Baba had two million naira in his account, in another two weeks it's finished to assist him. And the last thing he wanted to do was to put another chapel in the Shalom house. That's his house in Udawa. And we were holding the blocks. We had to hold it 1,000. Every journey that has a beginning must have an end. And so, the end of the road for His Grace, the Most Reverend Abiodun Adetiloye, came on December 14, 2012, only 11 days before his 83rd birthday. The news of his death sent shockwaves across the length and breadth of Nigeria and even beyond. Messages of commiseration 
poured in from the nooks and crannies of the world. The governor of Ikiti State, Dr. John Kaudi Fayemi, tapped the list of dignitaries who paid condolences to the family of the late primate at their country home of Odoa, Ikiti. I am um, I'm lost for words, but we thank God. We are here today now to celebrate a life, not to mourn. We are here to thank God for bringing Baba out of his Nazareth. Uh, Baba could have been a Lagosian or from all of these big places, but God chose that Baba should come from here. And that is a remarkable statement about the enormity of the place God occupies in our lives. Uh, Baba is not, yes, is from Oduawa, but Baba does not belong to Oduawa. Baba does not even belong to Ekiti. I love you, Shepard. Baba, if you ask me, does not belong to Nigeria. Those who go to Lambeth Palace, and you know, sir, you know the place that Baba occupies in the annals of the Anglican faith in the world. We must never forget that Papa belonged to the world. And it is in this regard that we owe him a duty and indeed a responsibility as a state where it comes from to take this upon ourselves without prejudice to whatever the Church of Nigeria will do. And how else can a man's true greatness be measured? Even in death, the late primate of the Church of Nigeria remains an outstanding cleric and icon of the Christian faith. Adetiloye will be sorely missed for all the virtues he stood for. His exemplary life would forever be remembered by his family, the church, Ekiti, his land of honor, and indeed the entire country. Good night, Joseph Abiodun Adetiloye.